A one and a two and a chick a boom a chick. Just to do a quick open to this uh, recording today with Tony Woodall. If you want to be a better manager of your team, whether those are your employees, whether those are your trade partners, frankly, what you're going to learn also would have an impact on life outside of work as well. If you want to get better, if you want to have more self-awareness on what motivates you, on how you can best communicate, if you want to be a better manager of your people, you got to tune in and listen to this whole thing. Good stuff from Tony Woodall. Enjoy. Welcome, everyone. This is Kyle Hunt. Welcome to Remodelers on the Rise. And just because we're real, Tony, I am going to tell the people that Tony and I were talking and I said, Tony, I never make any edits to these things. Like it's just free flowing conversation. And the first thing I do, I click record. I go, hey, everybody, Kyle Hunt, Remodelers on the Rise. And I say, I have Tony Woodwall when his name is Woodall, Woodall with Rootstock. And I butchered it. We stopped it. I clicked re-record, but I need to just be transparent, authentic, so I feel good about that and let it, people it, know it's, it's okay. okay to make mistakes, right? It's not a big deal. Just take action, and if you need to start over the top, so be it. Tony, welcome. Thank you, Kevin. You're, you're <laughs> you are you are welcome. Oh no, got to push that. I don't know your name. No, nope, oh. we're not going to edit <laughs> oh, that. No. We're just going to let that roll. Okay. And now you all know what you're in for today. Oh, I, have, uh, I have gotten to know Tony just over a series of a few calls. We have a uh, dear friend to both of us who is a mutual friend of ours. Um, his name's Terry, is, right? Did I say that one right? Terry? It's, uh, it's Terry. Yeah. Terry, yes. Yeah, dear Terry. Terry. Um, and we've connected just uh, through, through Terry. And in particular, um, Tony and I have done just a little bit of work over the last month or two where um, Tony had had me go through taking a DISC assessment and he's an expert at helping business owners, employees take that test, but then explain it and explain how it, how it can help articulate and explain how you best do work, what you're motivated by. I'll let him kind of explain that even a little better than I, but I'm glad we're, uh, we're taking time to do this. The reason I thought this would be a good podcast is I've done disc assessments for many of my remodeling clients along with them. Uh, we've studied them a little bit, but we've kind of just scratched the surface. Every time what I am really shocked by is how the, the client that I, especially my clients that I've known for a long time, um, how I, I know them and I know kind of how they work and what they're motivated by. Then I read their disc assessment and I'm like, man, this is spot on just so similar. And I can just see whether it's hiring, whether it's how do you get your teammates to work um, better? How do you understand your motivations and how you work best? There's just a ton of value here. And I wanted Tony to kind of come on and we can have just a conversation around this topic. Um, so that's kind of where we're going to, we're going to start Tony is just, if I'm a remodeler, if maybe I've heard of it a little bit, maybe I've taken one years ago, sure. sell us on kind of and explain to us the, the value in it. And what are some of the things that, that we can get out of it? Sure. Well, I think that I want to start kind of generally for any, any human, anybody on the planet. Okay. I, I think that DISC, um, the, the science that DISC is in is called psychometrics. Um, I always say that it's not personality. Personality is a really deep, deep well. And I, I, I don't think really very few people are qualified to say, here's your personality. But DISC um, is really a good way to look at your observable behavior. Um, your observable behavior is just one part of your whole being. Um, it's like the tip of the iceberg. And so in one sense, DISC really isn't all that important to identifying who you are as an individual, but it's really, really important because it's really all that people see. So the minute that you sit down and do DISC, you have to know two things. Number one, this is not definitively my personality. This is not the, the essence of my being. And number two, this is pretty much what everyone sees. So in one sense, it's, you know what I mean? So it's kind of weird that we are judged by the surface, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, all we see is someone else's behavior. All we see is someone else's style. And so DISC will give you your style, not only your style, but your style compared to thousands upon thousands of other people. And so why is that important? That's important because self-awareness is the gateway to all growth. I don't care if it's your yeah, business. Yeah, say, say that again. I think that's a sure. good line. Yeah, self-awareness is the gateway to all personal growth, hmm. all of it. Um, think about your health, right? If you go into the doctor and do a diagnostic, they will tell you, here's how healthy you are. Here's how healthy you're not. Then from there, you can take steps. Um, 
a psychometric profile, what it will do like DISC, is it will tell you, here's who you are compared to everyone else on the planet. And that gives you so much self-awareness immediately. And because the weird thing about that is we as human, we individuals, we tend to normalize our own behavior. So for example, if you're off the charts on a dominance factor, which is the first letter of DISC, which is dominance, if you're off the charts on dominance, you won't know. You'll think everyone else is just a wimp, okay? <laughs> if you're off the charts on I, like you're a high influence, Kyle, so you're super high influence. You're off the charts on influence. You're a people person. That's why you're doing this podcast. Um, if, if you're a people person, you don't, you don't know that you're a people person, you're going to judge everyone else as being kind of cold or not nice, okay? Um, and then S, which is steadiness, um, that is pace of life. And so if you're high, if you have a high steadiness factor, that means that you like a consistent pace. And you're going to believe everyone else around you likes that too. So really, you need self-awareness around who you are because you're totally blind to what makes you unique. That's just how it is. Hmm. I feel like you have to finish. We got D, we got I, we got yeah. S. You got to finish sure. that off. Sure. C is compliance. And that is how you handle rules and procedures put on you by others. Okay. So go through it. And I apologize yeah. for making you go through it again, but do that again, okay. just so everybody kind of yeah. understand exactly what it is again, and maybe just add a, a little bit of color to it. Now, and it's fine that I have to go through it again because I have no S. I'm super fast all the time. <laughs> and so my whole life, people are like, can you slow down? Right. But, pa but pause even there, right? Self-awareness, the fact yeah. that I'm, I'm a low S and the fact that that means something. And I think that's, that's one of the, it's one of the goals is for you to, to study this enough to realize one, this is a, this is something that's been around for a long time. It works. Mm -hmm. Business owners and business people in all sorts of industries have been using it for decades. You look, even our industry, this is a huge thing that Remodelers Advantage does. This is a huge thing that a lot of coaches and consultants just even within our remodeling uh, world do. And just your, your point there of I'm a low S. So that reminds me when I'm actually thinking about it, a lot of times I just rush through things mm -hmm. now that that's, there's power there. So, Yes, Mr. Low S, can you please <laughs> slow it down, Tony, and just sure. go through go through disc one more time, just those, and sure. maybe add just a little bit to it. Yeah, I want to just say before I go through the D, I, S, and C is that this idea that there are four kinds of behaviors goes back to like the third century BC. So mm -hmm. it's it's been around forever. You know, some people say oh, I don't know if I believe in all that. Well, I mean, the whole entirety of recorded Western history does so. So, so if you want to argue <laughs> with that, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, feel free. You can. This is a free country. Right. But I mean, you know, people need no, no, things so, a long yeah, time let's, ago. Let's test you real quick. Somebody that says, hey, I don't know if I believe in that. You could probably describe their disc profile to me I, real quickly, couldn't you? I could. Yeah. What are they? So they're they're going to be a low I. Um, so they're going to be low influence, which means they're not really super people people. Um, they're going to be hard science people. So they're going to be high C probably. Interesting. And they might be, it might be high D, which is pretty dominant and they just want to have their own way all the time. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> hit, hit, us, hit us through a little bit again on that DIS. Sure. So D stands for dominance and that dominance is all about how you handle problems. It, it's a pretty narrow scope of dominance. So for example, if someone runs into my building and they have a gun and they're going to shoot someone, there's all different kinds of ways that we're going to respond. I'm going to run right at that person and probably die first because I am a 100 on dominance. I'm mm -hmm. going to try <laughs> and solve that problem. Someone else might actually duck under a table, think about it a little bit, call some people, call the police, survive, save the day. Me, I'm going to get my head shot. <laughs> you know, so, so dominance is all about how you respond to problems. And a high dominance person will jump right in. They actually get energy from putting out fires. Mm. That, that's, that's the kind of person they are. A lower dominance person, they will still respond to a problem and they will solve problems, but they'll be more cautious. They'll be more methodical. They won't shoot first and ask questions later. They'll assess the situation. So um, it's really important to understand that because if you're a high dominance person, and a lot of entrepreneurs are, they believe that firefighting is the, the penultimate of leadership, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's just one aspect of leadership. So that's, that's dominance. That's the D, um, how you respond to problems. The okay. I is influence, and that's how you win people over to your point of view. Everyone out in the world is trying to win people over to their point of view. If you're a high I, 
you're going to do it through persuasion. You're going to, you're going to smile and you're going to smile more. You're going to have more smiles when you're trying to win someone over. That's how you are. Kyle, you have a high, I hope I can pick on you throughout this whole. You absolutely can. Okay. I, actually <laughs> have my, I actually have my disc profile pulled up. Now when <clears throat> our buddy Terry and a couple others, when they said, Oh, you went through that disc assessment and they said, summarize it for me. I said, well, Tony basically explained to me why I am as incredible as I am. So I'd it's, be happy to look at it, of course. <laughs> let's look at it. Let's analyze my, no. No, but I am, right? I'm high on, on influence. And just yeah. one of the screens, one of the pages on here that kind of explains that, like enthusiastic, persuasive, convincing, poised, optimistic, trusting. You know, I'm, I'm very high on that side of things. And frankly, that what you had, when, I, when we went through this together and you're like, hey, read this description of how to best communicate with you. Read this one of how best to not communicate. As we were going through it, I'm like, yes, yeah, that's, that's like 90% on. Like that is what fires me up. That is what brings me energy or boy, that is what just totally turns me off. And the more I understand that, the more I can, whether it's build my team um, around me to, to offset some of that, or even for me, when we went through it, it just, it, it, emphasized some of what I kind of picked up from, you know, 11 years of running my business, but it gave me some clarity on, man, I, I do need to do more of that in my business. And maybe I even need to just design my day in and day out to do more mm -hmm. of that because I just feed off and I love it. Yes. Um, it gives, so, you, it yeah, gives it, you energy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And now, now the thing about a, a low eye. So if you're a low eye individual, you will still win people to your point of view, but you'll do it through data. You'll do it through facts. You'll do it through calculating thoughts. So, for example, my wife is the opposite of me. She, I'm high eye. She's a lower eye. Look, it's, it's fine to pick on me, but careful. <laughs> I, know. Now, I mean, this is being recorded. I, I might tag you on Facebook. She may see it. You don't know how this stuff works. She doesn't pay attention to my life, Kyle. Uh -huh. she, she, <laughs> uh -huh. Let's not get into a marriage. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> I've got I've got dozens of husband wife teams that I'm clients of. I'm oh, a man. marriage counselor. Let's not go down this road. Oh, As man. my disc profile probably shows I'd be excellent marriage counselor. You would be an excellent marriage counselor. Um, so but 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 a lower eye person, they want to persuade you, but they want to do it through data. They're less um, demonstrative and they're more factual, you know. Um, like a zero eye would be like a Spock, you know, like Spock from Star Trek would be like mm. a zero eye. And your, and your um, wife is like that as you were going. Is no, that, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say oh, that. Kyle. <laughs> but she has a lower eye, like she facts. Is, yeah. And here's the thing of it. Here's something interesting. We can get into the compare contrast, but like, I'm a cheerleader. I'm a cheerleader. When I'm excited, I'm, ah, Hey, look at this. Someone who's not high eye, it turns them off. It turns them off. If you're a cheerleader, it just makes it, it seems like it's fake. It seems like it's not genuine. I really am genuinely a cheerleader. You are too. Mm -hmm. But it, but to a lower eye person, it seems disingenuous. So anyway, um, S is steadiness. And that's all about the pace of life. So how do you respond to the pace of your environment? So, someone who's a higher S, they want the same consistent steady pace that they had yesterday. They want the same feel in terms of the clock. People who are low S, they thrive on quick pace change. Um, they're more of a sprinter, rester kind of person. Um, pace is really important because if you're a high, if, if you're a low S and you're always in a hurry, you're going to wear out high S people. If you have a high S person on your staff, you're, you're going to literally make them want to take a nap 10 minutes into talking to you. Mm. That was a big thing I had to learn. I have no S at all. So I'm always in a hurry. I'm always talking fast. I wear those people out. Conversely, when I go to the DMV or I go to the store and the person in front of me is really slow, I almost want to die. Like I just, I am, I'm wore out. You know what I mean? Like I'm wore out. I'm like, Oh my, get me out of here. I get, ah, I got to move on. So I just know that about myself that I am super high paced. I hate consistent pace. Consistency is like the killer to my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I know a lot of people are high S and as a matter of fact, most people are more S than not. So anyway, that's, that's steadiness. Um, compliance okay, is how you handle rules and procedures set by others, set by others. Um, so some people are by nature kind of rule benders or rule breakers. Let me talk about the high I people, all right? High I people, they, they are such people people that they will break a rule if it benefits a person. Hmm. Whereas, a, whereas a high C individual, they live for the rules for the sake of the rules. That's what they do. And so they are going to keep the rules. It doesn't matter who it hurts. It doesn't matter how much it hurts the population. They're going, it's the law. Um, they say things like um, rules are made for a purpose. 
a high I person will say that rules are meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that there's a place for high C and a place for low C on your spectrum. And so that's kind of like dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance. Okay. The, the thing that's popping in my head that's just really, I think, applicable to the remodelers that are listening to this is as, as business, whether if you're growing your remodeling business, you're hiring people, that, that first hire might be an office manager, that first hire might be certainly some folks out in the field. Um, then you get into maybe that next level where you hire maybe a, an estimator or production manager. Um, now, all of a sudden, you, you're dealing with the relationship you have with that person. Let's say it's production manager. You're dealing yeah. with the relationship you have, um, their relationship with your office manager, um, your relationship with your, with your team in the field. It just gets complicated in a hurry. And as you're, as you're maturing as a business owner, something that I've seen is you need to manage. You can't just come with one management style yeah. for a team of 10, a team of six. You need to be cognizant of what motivates your various teammates. So as, as Tony was going through that description, I hope that a lot of you are listening and going, oh man, you know, Chuck out in the, out in the field is super high S. Like he likes his pace. And when I upset the apple cart, you know, he, it, it flusters him. Mm -hmm. Well, the way that you interact with, with Chuck is going to be different than the way you interact with, with Paul, who thrives off of that energy and excitement. So talk to me about how you can use DISC to be um, a better manager. And yeah, that's my question, to be a yeah. better manager and talk about that. Well, I mean, so it's all about self-awareness and it's all about awareness within a team, right? So what I always say is a little bit of self-awareness goes a long way. And so the minute that we give a disc to it, and we do a lot of stuff with teams. So five, 10, 15 people, we give everyone a disc assessment. And then I compile all the data and I go to the outliers first. I go to the people who are extreme, a high I guy like you and a high D guy like me. And I say, you are extreme in your behavior. You're not normal. You need help. You need to be hugged a lot or whatever it is. But, but I go to the extremes, not only on all the different factors, but also anyone who's in the middle. And I say, you have to understand that this, 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 is, this is only 20% of all people have this style or only 5% of people act this way. And I just bring awareness to that. Like, like you are not quote unquote normal. You think you are, <laughs> but you're not. And then we, so we start with the extremes and I'll, I'll give you a great example. I do a lot of work with cross-functional teams. So engineers or estimators and salespeople, mm. they don't get along usually because they're just opposite. They're opposite behavioral styles. And I put it on a graph and I show them, you're over here on the wheel, you're over there on the wheel. That's why you don't get along. Just understand it. Take a deep breath. It's okay. We're all God's children. And so just self-awareness is a gateway to everything. And then from there, even if you don't don't throw, don't throw out statements like we're all God's children and, and <laughs> me not to go down the rabbit hole of that. You know, I love to talk about faith and but I'm going to let that one, I'm going to let that one slide for now. Cause well, you're well, the point. Yeah. Well, I bring, I bring it up because, because so, so disc covers all normal behavior in humanity. So we're not talking about like um, a schizophrenic or we're, we're, we're talking about normalized behavior. So it, anything on that chart is normal because it's in the world and it exists and it's, and it's high functioning people. So that's why I bring it up. But, but engine, but really, really hardcore, like technical people, high C people who don't like, you know, to be around people that much or super, super out there salespeople, they tend to believe the world is like them and they're just not right. It's, it's not true. The world is like everyone. Mm. So just getting that self-awareness is, is huge. One thing, one thing I'll put in the, uh, in the notes is just a, just a little snapshot of, um, my wheel, which puts me way out at the, on the promoter, um, side of things. There's actually, what is there? There's the, the star and the circle here, which yeah. you had explained to me when I went through it, but I'll, I'll show that just so you guys kind of see mm. the different, the different areas and kind of see an example of that. Okay. Yeah. So how do you see, you know, understand if I'm a manager, if I'm the owner of the business, what, what insights am I going to be deriving from this? I've, I've, I've threw out a couple, like, you know, what motivates them, how to communicate, how to not communicate, maybe put a little um, more on, on that of what am I going to get out of this by going through this process with my team? Sure. So the, the first thing is, I think, again, is every leader needs to lead by example. And if you're driving towards self-awareness, that's going to pay off. You, you leading yourself well, I think is the first place mm. for any leader. Okay. So, and, and be really transparent about that. Like, like when I went through my disc, like 
eight years ago, I was leading a team and I showed them, I said, guys, here's exactly why I'm a freak right here. Here's the science. And it just, it, it just disarmed everyone. And it was like, okay, Tony's willing to admit that that's who he is and who he's not. Um, so I think that for the leader just to go and be transparent in their process and their, their, just, their self-discovery is really going to pay off. But, but the second thing is we have to understand that people are wired a certain way and they're wired a certain way from a very young age. So if, if you are constantly interrupting a high S individual with fires, you're going, they're going to wear them out. It's, the job's going to be hard and they will leave. They will leave. And it's not good leadership. So put that person in a role where they can be consistent. Conversely, if you have someone who thrives on challenges, don't put them behind the scenes. Don't put them, um, don't make them break their brain on a spreadsheet for a week. They're going to hate their life after two years. And again, no one knows this about themselves. Mm. Um, I was talking to an engineer recently who, you know, he was, he's a kid. He was good at math. His parents gave him accolades for being good at math and he hates to be behind the scenes. So he became a salesperson, took him 10 years to get there. But anyway, so I just think that self-awareness for the leader, be transparent in your process when you go through that. And then, and then really, really understand the limitations and the greatness of your people and just cultivate that as a culture. You know? mm. And it's, and it's hard. No, number one, they aren't able to articulate that you're running a business. You're trying to make sense of it all. This is a tool that cuts through a lot of that clutter and gets to the heart of, Oh, that, that, that makes sense. Especially mm -hmm. when you have somebody explain it and, and are in your learning how to, how to read it. Um, share with me your thoughts on using the disc assessment, as part of the hiring process? Sure. Well, so there's a couple different ways you can do that. First of all, if you're hiring, say you have an estimator, I don't know how your business works exactly, but say you have an estimator and you're hiring another one and the estimator you have is really good, give them the disc and try to reverse engineer that person. Just, just try to get an understanding of what makes them tick if they're good, right? And then when you go and hire the next person, just give them the assessment as part of the, as part of the, um, the onboarding or as part of the hiring process. You want to have something of a match there, right? That's one mm -hmm. way to do it. You can reverse engineer your people. Another way is, is just give them the disc. And then that way you're, autom you're automatically telling your new hires, we are a open book um, company. We are, we are aware of ourselves. We value self-awareness and we are always working on ourselves. It, it's, it, it makes a cultural statement hmm, from the moment does. that they start. You know what I mean? So yeah. th those are the two things. Reverse engineer your people if, as best you can and then make a cultural statement with it. That's really interesting. interesting. One of my, one of my clients is going through just a hiring <clears throat> process for a, um, actually a, a marketing position right now. And he's, he's putting the disc assessment out there and it's part of their culture. They've used it for a long time. Um, but he's putting it out there before the hire is made. And it was, I'm walking through the process with him. And what was interesting about it is, you know, we heard a lot of good things from her in the interview. We're both very high on her and we think she's going to be a great fit. And we're using the disc as a little bit of just a, uh, a measuring stick, a barometer that, you know, is what she said, what she said, the actual, mm -hmm. um, you know, who she is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And it's, uh, and it's going to illustrate that and then give, just give more confidence in that hiring process. We hear all the time, you know, hire slow, fire fast. If you want to hire slow, this could be part of it. You know, part of your process is, you know, to go through a disc assessment. And like you said that, whether it's subconsciously, man, these guys got their stuff together. They take their time, right? Yeah. They, they're, they're organized. They've got a process. What a great way and uh, way to start somebody up in the business. And it does definitely set a kind of a culture tone to it. Um, yeah. You meant you used reverse engineer and self awareness. There too. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about Gary V at all? I love Gary V. Do you love Gary V? I love Those Gary. Those are two v. phrases that I know he he loves. Um, I'm going to I'm going to see him in May. Terry told me. Did he? Terry I told, told he, Ter I told Terry that <laughs> three hours ago. He no. He told me on the phone like right before I got on the phone with you. What he's like, are you? Saying? He's like, are you a Gary V fan? I'm like, yeah, I'm a Gary V fan. He's like, oh man, Kyle's going to see him. I I'm am. like, oh man. I am. I'm doing one of those 4D things. Oh, that's, he's, that's great. Yeah. Cause you were using some of his buzzwords, but now, oh, really? now, okay. now I'm a little bit more uh, thrown off the fact that every time I talk to Terry within <laughs> hours, did he repeat anything else this morning? Cause we talked about some like deep stuff, but he told me he had a green shirt on. Um, he told me that. Okay. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> All right. Um, a lot of times you'd start with kind of the bio or whatnot, but I, I think this might be a good place to go next is I was reading sure. and you, I said, Hey, send me over your bio and just your, your headshot. And um, when I was reading your bio this morning, it was, I hope, I hope you remember writing it. I don't think it was too long ago. Um, 
but it was just a, it was an interesting story of, you know, this was the type of manager you were. And this is, you kind of realize, man, what's going on here. You went down a path to really improve your management style. And I think it's a, it's a story that might resonate with a lot of remodelers who, who get in this business and, and work hard and do great work. And as a, re, as a result of that, they start hiring people, but boy, you know, I didn't get into this business so that I could manage people. And, and it's a new thing. It's a hard thing. Right? It's a hard thing to manage people well. Maybe just share your story a little bit of how you even arrived at being an expert uh, when it comes to this side of things. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know why, but from a very young age, I'm talking like 27 years old, I've been a director or a VP. Is that, is that young? Usually when people say from a very young age, they're talking like <laughs> from when I was a kid on, on Papa's lap. Like, I mean, so, okay, I'll put it this way. When I'm in a room of directors and I'm the only one in my 20s, 30s, or half of 40s, like okay. everyone's 50. Okay. So I, I, I've been in companies where I just, I've been rewarded with leadership at a very young age, Got much it. to the detriment of that company. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because um, I'm, I'm just going to sound braggadocious, but I don't, I don't want to be braggadocious. But wh whenever, I, whenever I took a sales role, I was really good at my job. I, I was a great contributor. I was one of the top salespeople. And what do you do when you, when you have an awesome individual contributor? You make them a leader. Hmm. Here's the thing that I learned the hard way, and every company that I worked for learned the hard way, is just because you're an awesome individual contributor does not mean you're going to be a great organizational leader. Um, I burned people out. I drove people crazy. I drove people out of organizations because my style was so unique and my, my, my skill set was so unique that I expected it from other people. Hmm. And it wasn't until I began to really self-assess and go through some kind of like self-discovery that I realized how unique I am in certain ways and how unfair it was to expect that from other people and how many voids I had. So like I would ignore things that I sucked at, you know, and I would just double down on things that I was good at. So mm. I had to go through a process of realizing who I was and who I wasn't and who I needed really. Um, and then when I went through that more and more, I just cultivated an awareness of who I was and, and I cultivated an awareness of how big the world is and how many different styles there are in the world. And I just had to, I had to learn because I just, there was so much pain associated with how I burned people out and how mm. I burned teams out, how I hurt companies. Um, still a great, great contributor, did a great job as a salesperson, but as, as a manager, as a leader, I just didn't have the stuff because I didn't have any awareness. Hmm. I think what's, what's also interesting about that is when we study ourselves, when we have more self-awareness, um, like everything you just said there is definitely focused on the business side of things. But one thing I love about the work that I do as a, as a business coach for remodelers is, you know, we fix business problems in order to not just fix business and make more money, but it also impacts the other areas of our life, right? Our relationships with spouses, kids, significant yeah. others, family, et cetera. Um, and what do you, as you go through, whether it's a personal story or whether as you, you know, go through this self-awareness, um, you know, process with your clients, um, how does it impact kind of not just the work environment, but outside of the work environment. Cause that's an area that I just, I, I love to work in when I, when I interact with clients, like, man, you can, you can have an ex exceptional business. It can be profitable, but if it's a mess outside of the, outside of the office, then, you know, what, what are we doing here? We need to analyze that. Any thoughts on how this translates into life outside of work? Yeah. I mean, let me tell you something. If you're married, your spouse will love if you're on a discovery path to realize who you are and who you're not and your style. Your spouse will benefit from that tremendously because it's a really humble thing. It's a really humble, think about that, right? It's really subtle, but it's a really humble thing to stop and say, you know what? I'm made a certain way. I'm wired a certain way. Not everybody is wired my way and I have to adjust for different people. That's insane. That's incredibly humble. And, and your spouse will benefit your children. I mean, you have kids, those kids are wired by age two or three, they're, that's mm -hmm. just the psychology. They are who they are. And if you're trying to make them more like you, you're trying to create them in your image, it's just, you're not gonna have a great relationship with your kids. And on and on, it's just, it's just when you get awareness around how diverse the different styles and temperaments are in the world and that you're just one small part of it, it just, it changes your whole worldview mm -hmm. and it makes you a more humble person. It's good stuff. That's, that's something that when you were going through it with me, and I think I mentioned it a couple of times, like, oh, this personality, personality. And you emphasize a few times of, you know, there's no right or wrong here. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're high this, low this, high that, low, it's not, it's not right or wrong. It's just, it's just who you are. 
Yeah. Um, it's how it's how you're wired because with each of the ways that this kind of plays out for the different people that take a disc assessment, there's strengths and weaknesses, you know, for for everybody, yeah. right? But uh, man, when you are when you identify that, it it just gives you a lot of clarity. I just think it's such a critical, you know. Tell me how else you're going to be a better manager than truly getting to know who your employees are, what motivates them, how to best communicate with them. And, and boy, when we start to understand that more and we can do more of what works and less of what works, they enjoy their work more. There's less turnover. There's more harmony between the rest of your team. And I love what you said earlier. So sometimes I just kind of recap things. So I'm recapping some of what you said. Um, what you said earlier about, what did you say earlier? I, I interrupted myself and I said, I like to recap things. And then I lost, <laughs> then I lost my thought. But man, know. what you said earlier good. was awesome. brilliant. I'm glad, I'm glad that was good. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't capture. It's fine. Just go re <laughs> rewind, rewind the tape people. Listen to the first 20 minutes, <laughs> skip the first 30 seconds where I, you know, just went off off script there, but okay, good. So the, the big thing I'm hearing here is, is kind of a little bit of a, I mean, just even if you take away one thing that I, I love as far as takeaways go. So I'm going to kind of share a few of my takeaways. And then if you could maybe even share um, two things, one, anything mm -hmm. else you wish I would have asked you about related to this sure. topic. And then if you were to, if you had somebody that had just listened to this um, and you said, look, here's a few things that more than anything else, here are a couple takeaways that I want you to have. Kind of want to want you to share um, what your takeaways are. So anything else plus takeaways. Um, sure. Let me have you answer that first and then I'll, I'll close with a couple takeaways. Sure. I, I think the first thing is really important is we are blind to what makes us great and what makes us weak. We just tend to normalize our own behavior and we think that we're just in the middle. We're not. There are things that we're really, really good at and things that we're really, really bad at. You got to get a handle on the outliers because that's where you relate to people. That's where you, that's where you inspire people. That's where you turn people off. Get some awareness around the edges of your person. Okay. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that there is no right or wrong in the disc. There are certain jobs that work well for certain styles and what have you, but really it's normal behavior. It's all normal. And the more that you can, the more that you can pin yourself in the greater context of humanity, the better you're going to be and the better your people are going to be. So those are the two things. Love it. Um, I'm going to share a takeaway here, but what you said just gave me another question I wanted to ask. Sure. Um, when you really un understand the disc and you understand, like earlier, I think I said, um, was it related to, oh, that person that says, wow, well, you sure this stuff works, right? <laughs> well, I mean, we're going back all the way BC, you know, yeah. so I mean, if you want to argue with that, but you immediately kind of knew that person. Well, when we're going through sales, you know, and I always say it when I'm talking to, when we're, when we're training on that initial phone call with a new prospect, a new remodeler. And when you say, oh, what do you do for a living? And they say, oh, I'm, I'm an engineer. Or if they said, you know what, I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom. Well, the way, the way that we may approach that conversation just instinctively in our, in our salesmanship is a little bit different. Sure. You know, talk to me about how, how to use this as a sales tool. Yeah. You know, as, if we study this enough and we get a good handle on it, is it something that you can kind of quickly, based on people's response, the reactions they're giving, you're yeah. able to identify a little bit and then maybe, you know, shift the way that you're interacting and talking to them? Sure. I mean, I wish if we had more time, I can get into like cultural things and gender things. But, but, but generally speaking, here's a couple of different things. I'll, I'll speak to you if you're a salesperson. If you're a salesperson, you're probably a high eye or you like to be around people. Probably, hopefully, usually. Mm -hmm. Some people aren't like that. So if you're, if you're calling on someone, if you're trying to sell something to someone and they're not demonstrative, that they're not like, they're not demonstrating smiles and they're not really happy to see you. They're probably not a high eye. They're looking to be proved. You, you, you got to prove them out. You, you have to prove with facts and data why you're the best choice. Other people make friends with them and win the sale. That's me. If you make friends with me, I'll buy anything from you. Mm. I, I, I'll buy anything. If, if you're nice to me, tell me, I, tell me I look good in this jacket. I'll buy anything. But, but most people maybe aren't like that. So that's one thing. It's just like as a salesperson, you have to understand that there are people, people, and not people, people. There are data people, and there are people, people. Okay. The next thing is around pace, this little thing called steadiness. I tend to underestimate that, but people, if you're going too fast or if you're going too slow, it's exhausting. So if you're a high S person and the, and the person across from you if you're a high S person, the person across you is in a hurry, you better be in a hurry if you want to win. You better, you better speed up. 
conversely, if, if, if you're a low ass person and they're slow, you better be ready for a longer conversation. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just and that's, the way and that's watching their body language. That's watching, yeah. right. You can, you can tell what they are just based on that. The pace How of their, talking. The, the pace of their voice. Okay. We have a good mm -hmm. friend, Terry Simpson, Terry Simpson's high ass. Isn't every conversation like you're at the barn and <laughs> at the barn, at the barn, is that what you the said? Barn, the, the barn, you know, like, like you're just standing around the hay bale talking about, I feel like every time I talk to Terry, I'm in a Cracker Barrel commercial every time. <laughs> you know what I mean though? He's like, so like, I'm doing good, Tony. <laughs> that, I'm not. You know that, what is I mean? an that is an excellent Terry Simpson impersonation. Jeez. Now, if I was an excellent podcaster, I would pause here. I would, I would record, ter in co covertly record Terry talking, and then I would have Bailey, my assistant, kind of wh whittle that in. Um, but let's, let's just talk about Terry just for another 30 seconds. This is literally no value to anybody else. <laughs> just us. That way we can say, Terry, we talked about you all the yeah. time through this so we can listen to it. Yeah. Um, so you're saying Terry Simpson reminds you of a Cracker Barrel store? Yes. Yeah, every I call him if I'm in a hurry, I got five minutes. Hey man, buddy, I got five minutes. I wanted to say hi. Good, Tony. How are you? I gotta go, man. I'm really I got I gotta Okay. <laughs> right? It is so, it is true. I'm it a low true. S. I'm a low S, he's a high S. That's the only thing I, the only other thing I would add is when we were interacting and I was talking about my um my disc assessment, I said, Well what, how did how did Terry get on that and you said well he was he was high this and low s and he's like doesn't that make sense like he really and you get to know somebody like having a mutual friend like that yeah. i'm like it makes all the sense in the world it no does. i that is yeah he's a good dude yeah he is he's awesome knock out yeah. knock out your 15 today terry <laughs> all right again inside joke all right so oh my goodness the last thing i, I would kind of What's that? I just say, I think I finished up all my good stuff I had to you say. You did. It was great. Um, it was great. So last couple takeaways I would have is, you know, part of the reason I thought this would be valiant and it has been for remodelers listening to this is just a reminder, you need to be a better leader. I don't care who you are. If you're built, if you've got an excellent business going, an excellent remodeling business, you can get better. That's part of the game of business is that it kind of, it never ends and there's other you know, areas of your management style of your approach that can continue to be improved. Let this be a reminder that in amongst the busyness and the chaos of running a business, you've got to take the time to understand your people, to manage them well, to understand what motivates them. This DISC assessment could be a really helpful tool in doing that. And the other thing I would add, and it was a takeaway that just came to me as, as we've been talking, is we don't become entrepreneurs so that we can do the stuff that we really don't like to do. Like we, we become entrepreneurs, we take on that risk, we put in the time, energy, effort in order to build a business that really can free us up to do the things that we love. And I think sometimes it just accidentally happens where we end up spending a ton of time on the stuff we really don't like. When you're self-aware and you understand your disc profile, and you study yourself and you have self-awareness, one of the benefits that can come from that is you become a lot more clear with, wow, that's the person I need to hire to take this part of the business away from me. Maybe it is the estimating. Those details just drive you bonkers and you need to, you know, move that off. So maybe it's the sales. Maybe you're not a people person, you're a little more rare as an entrepreneur, and you need to find somebody to do that for you so that you can do the nitty gritty details. Things become clearer on running a, uh, a business that serves you a little bit more when you understand this. So another kind of maybe a little out of left field, but something that I wanted to share there. So to, to wrap it up, how can people, one is kind of what do you do as just kind of your services. And sure. then if, if people are interested in kind of getting in touch with you, how can they do that? Yeah. Tony, so Wood, I, Tony Woodwall. You can call me whatever you want, Kevin. Okay. So, yeah. um, <laughs> um, so basically my, my whole thing is I, I help organizations multiply value through their people. So that I help people first organizations multiply value. How do you do that? You develop leaders and you develop teams. On the leader development side, I do executive coaching. Um, a lot of that's based in self-awareness, like disc profiles. I have a lot of other psychometric profiles I do too, like emotional intelligence and um, axiology and things like that. But um, get some self-awareness and then we hone in on who you are, who you're not. We help build a team around you and then we help you thrive through your people. So that's really, we do leader development. We also do team development. Um, we help teams get along better because that's where it's at. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. You as a leader, you got to lead yourself well, and you got to lead your people, and then your teams have to get along. 
So th those are the two things that we do all kinds awesome. of ways. You can check out my website. It's irootstock.com. And I don't know if you're going to have any contact information in your, in your podcast, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. So Cause, ba cause, ba cause Bailey's going to be listening to this and she's going to hear me say, Hey Bailey, make sure you put the contact information in there. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Bailey. Professional <laughs> operation here. Um, awesome. Good. This was great. This is, I think you kind of said, man, if we had more time, we could get into this and this. And we may be uh, like a part two where we get into maybe a yeah. very firm focus on the sales. And you mentioned like cultural things and gender things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, if I'm a salesperson, those are things that, boy, if I get better and better at that. Um, my wife was just commenting the other day, I, I was doing a, a uh, presentation, 10 ways to be remarkable um, at customer service. And she was talking about an example of the appliance repair person who's been in our home twice lately. And she's like, you know what? I don't know how to really say it other than it's like he's been trained on how to properly treat the lady of the house who is there by herself. Like just the way he interacted, the way he asked permission, the way he was respectful and kind and, and, and quiet. Um, so, you know, there's so much to be done in, in our customer service and in our sales when we truly understand people. So this was fun. Thank you so much for, for your time, for your energy. Um, and wrap it up, man. Uh, what's your phone number uh, in case people wanted to reach out directly for that? Then maybe also just your email. A lot of people just listen to it uh, and maybe not looking at the notes. Sure. Yeah. So my, I'm in the Chicago area. So my phone number is 630-338-6018. You can catch my email at twoodall, T-W-O-O-D as in dog, A-L-L at irootstock.com. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle.